Thank you very much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Eric Arias, uh, currently at the College of William Mary. And I want to start motivating this project uh, by the fact that citizens' trust and cooperation with the state is a fundamental issue. And, and we can relate that to the projects that were before me, thinking about compliance with tax, thinking about access to courts. So this is a fundamental problem that affects our societies and our lives every day. In this project, what we want to do is we want to focus on a specific government agency, uh, and that is local police officers. And the way we think about it is that trust and cooperation among citizens and police officers is fundamental to security. Yet the challenge and the problem is that across both the developing world and the developed world, uh, the police forces are rarely trusted. And of course, these are also consequences for the lack of civilian cooperation with the police forces. And this has a myriad of consequences. Um, we can think of the lack of civilian cooperation in terms of reporting and providing tips and information uh, in, in having a consequence in, in failing to prevent or deter crime. We can think of the lack of, lack of trust to police officers uh, as something that would provide incentives or provide um, rent-seeking opportunities for politicians, for, I'm sorry, for police officers to engage in petty corruption. And of course, it can have general consequences for um, feelings about or perceptions about safety and security. Um, so th these, these are not only welfare consequences, but also cognitive consequences in the sense that we can have scarcity of financial resources, but we can also have scarcity of safety. Um, so when we think about this obvious challenge, what has been, what has been done lately? And the current big effort right now is community policing. And the intuition behind that is very simple. It's essentially, let's bring these police officers down to the ground, to your neighborhood, get to know you and get to know your problems, such that they can provide specific answers to your problems. Uh, in the case of Colombia, the, the ones I'm studying, uh, this started a few years ago under the Modelo Nacional de Vigilancia Comunitaria por Cuadrantes. Um, and of course, it's, it's been slowly progressing and expanding across the country. Um, these efforts have been rarely evaluated. Um, luckily, there's a burgeoning re uh, literature on these type of projects, and we're happy to be able to contribute to that. Um, at the same time, there, even if, so let's think about this type of community policing and having community meetings. Even if we know they work, still it's, 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 it's a very challenged decision from a policy-making perspective, because we are unclear also about the general equilibrium effects. If we, if we have community meetings here that improve trust, we don't know exactly what's the displacement effects of crime across the neighborhood or other neighborhoods. So the fundamental, I mean, these are high stakes to understand this phenomenon broadly speaking. Um, so the research question we have broadly is trying to understand what are the drivers and consequences of micro level state building. This is speaking about government legitimacy. And specifically we ask to what extent do community meetings among police officers and citizens on the one hand and the provision of security-related information on the other, to what extent that, ha that has an impact in terms of uh, perception of police officers and the state broadly, cooperation and trust. Um, our intuition is that we expect that both this face-to-face -face contact with police officers, as well as the provision of information, can increase crime reporting, at least the willingness to report crime. Um, we also expect beliefs about police type um, and trust in them to be updated. Uh, and of course, uh, we ground all these expectations in a large literature in terms of the provision of information as well as social norms, marketing, and uh, in terms of the meetings, we also try to uh, engage with the literature and debates, um, and also common knowledge dynamics that are created with face-to-face -face interactions. So what do we do? We implement a randomized controlled trial in the city of Medellin. The intervention started in June of this year and it will last approximately February of next year. Our unit of randomization is the police beat, that is the cuadrante in, in Medellin, and this is because that is the unit at which these, com these police officers, these specific police officers, are assigned to patrol the area. Um, we have a two by two design where we're working on 347 police beats in Medellin, that's essentially out of 413 approximately, so it's actually, we're working in the entire city of Medellin. This will have consequences for spillovers that I'll, I'll get later. Um, but essentially, what's, what's left out of sample are quadrantes that are essentially parks or airports, um, essentially not feasible for our intervention. So we have two treatment arms. The first one is these type of community meetings 
um, at the cuadrante level with your own patrulleros, with your own police officers. Um, this will happen every other month. Of course, we have strict protocols of what is being done, what is being said. Um, and I'm happy to discuss the, the, those details. Um, our second arm, our second treatment is the provision of information through leaflets. Uh, we have several designs here, but essentially we want to provide information, accurate information about crime statistics, um, change social norms, so we have a specific component on, on reporting violence against women that this is a crime, and so on. And this happens once a month. Uh, in both cases, the provision of information through leaflets and the invitation to the meetings happens door to door inside a cuadrante. Thank you. Um, and we treat or we invite people or, or we give the leaflet to people up to 350 households per cuadrante. That's on average, there's a lot of variation, but that's on average 22% uh, of the population within a cuadrante. Uh, in terms of linkages, this is actually, this project is part of uh, EGAP's Metaqueta Initiative number four with five other countries that include Brazil, Liberia, Pakistan, Philippines, and Uganda. And the Uganda team under Guy Grossman, uh, Rob Blair, and co is actually part of the EDI initiatives. Um, so there's a lot of actually built-in linkage here. Um, the output is going to be a book project as well as a meta-analysis. And that, of course, has consequences for data uh, that I'll discuss now. So essentially, we have three data um, or measurement strategies. The first one is ad admin data. We will have uh, geolocated timestamp crime reporting data. So of course, this is a behavioral measure in terms of reporting, as well as any type of police behavior, such as arrests. Um, our second data source is going to be uh, a survey. Um, we have baseline and inline survey of citizens, where we're serving 15 people per cuadrante. Our main outcomes here are essentially uh, the beliefs of citizens on, on, pol on police types, quality, trust, and so on, as well as self-reported cooperation with the police and self-reported victimization. Um, importantly, we also plan to have a survey of patrulleros, of police officers. Um, right now, that's a bit on hold in working for the final approval in the capital in Bogota. Uh, so we hope for sure to have an end line on patrulleros, if not uh, something on, on baseline. And of course, these, these both outcomes, admin and survey, are heavily harmonized uh, within the EGAP Metaqueta initiative. Um, our third component of data is a heavy qualitative approach. We not only will have pre- and post-intervention interviews, uh, but also detailed ethnographic note of every single meeting. So we'll have detailed accounts of what happened at every single meeting, what type of questions were asked, who asked those questions, and so on. Um, okay, sorry about that. So what's the status of the project? As, uh, as I sort of hinted before, we completed the baseline survey of 5,205 citizens of Medellin, uh, but not quite the police officers yet. Uh, we're close to complete the full first, first round of, of meetings and starting to plan the second round. Remember, this was, this, these meetings were twice, I mean, every two months. Um, and and I, I should know that also they're not happening at the same time, they're not starting at the same time, they're just being rolled over. Um, in terms of challenges, there's an important thing to note that um, there has been, and I'm sure it will be, changes in police assignment. These are due both to public safety issues on the spot, um, as well as general transfers of these, pol these police officers that used to work here, now it's being transferred to here. Uh, at the moment, the best thing we can do is track all those changes. Uh, um, but of course, this has non-trivial consequences for thinking about spillovers. Uh, the other thing I should note is, since I sort of briefly hinted before, since we're working essentially in the entire city of Medellin, most cuadrantes are continuous to, con contiguous to other cuadrantes that are also treated or under control. So we really need to think hard about uh, spillovers and that's something that hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll um, nail in tomorrow. Uh, in terms of where we want to go in terms of uh, next steps, um, the thing I want to pitch to you guys here is we're thinking about the importance of different beliefs about different uh, government agents. So for example, we want to try to understand to what extent people update about their own quadrante level police officers vis-a-vis -vis other police officers at the national level and so on. Similarly to other state agencies such as the district's attorney. And this can be linked to, to uh, research on, 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 the, on the criminal justice system and, and so on. We also, something that we're excited about and, and we're starting to think hard about it, is to what extent there's going to be differential updating in terms of trust versus quality. We can expect, actually, citizens to trust people more, even though they update negatively 
about their quality. Um, and finally, something I want to throw out there is that we're thinking hard how to embed behavioral games. Um, we can do that across the board at the end line survey. Uh, something else we want to consider is to have both citizens and police officers playing games. Um, of course, in order to do that, the challenge is how to think. I mean, we can do that on the meetings or after the meetings. The challenge would be how to think about those in the control areas where we need to create a meeting just for that. Um, so I'll, I'll finish with that and, and thank you so much for, for everything. So we have three minutes for questions. Just a clarification, the, the data that you're providing through the leaflets, was that already publicly available in other formats in theory at least, or is that newly available uh, there's a, It's a bit of both. I um, mean, some data such as you should call uh, the 911 line, that's very publicly available. The other thing that, that's, that we're providing is each quadrante, each police beat has a specific number to call. And that's always much faster than call the 123, the 911. So even though that's publicly available, nobody knows. Uh, and then of course we have the social marketing sort of norms message um, that, that of course is, is just our, our, our intervention. So this gets out of my um, one thing that's always a challenge is getting sort of an individual level measure that's sort of revealed preference of whether or not people have affect towards the state. Um, and so, yeah, I'm happy to talk more about ways that one might do that, but I think that's going to be quite critical for this. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Rana. related. So, in, in, this, in these meetings, you're basically generating a bond in the citizens and, and a single police officer. So, so I'm, I'm just wondering. How are you thinking about the interpretation? Because I can perfectly trust much more the, the city policeman that, that I'm talking to, but, but what we care about at the end of the day is the trust in the institution itself. So, no? so uh, yes. So two things. We will be able to measure that exactly. Uh, I should add that there are two police officers per shift. Um, and at least for policymaking, the, co the Colombian government wants to have those police officers to be there almost like long term, so in theory it should be there two years. So, so it's it's going to be relevant. Of course, we'll be able to measure exactly how the differential updating happening. I think it was a question. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, it's a little bit linked to the first question. Um, do you expect that there's also an effect just from the Uh, so, so to be honest, we actually I don't have uh, strong expectations about actual that the, the intervention is going to be able to move crime. I do expect a lot of uh, perceptions shifting, irrespective of the police. So we have questions about whether you trust your neighbors and any random Colombian and things like that. Uh, that's that's something we want to explore. Are you are you able to see the information on? So what can you be more explicit on the measures of cooperation? So, um, so we have, in, in terms of survey questions, we have, did you report a series of different crimes? Would you, if you were a victim of a crime, would you report it? Uh, we also have questions of where would you go? It's very different if you go to a police station, if you would call, if you call a cuadrante. Um, we have questions about, did you complain about uh, officer's behavior that you didn't like? Did you prov randomly provide any tip about, oh, the, they're, they're selling illegal stuff in my corner? Um, and are you anticipating to cross-check this with administrative data? Yes, uh, and that's the beautiful thing about the admin data. It's not only geo code and timestamp, it also tell, tells us exactly what information is being given. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.